We do have our upcoming uh, pairings for round five. It is Maurice Uteg of Germany versus Aurelien Sula of France. A very hype match here of very strong players. Yes, Aurelien Sula is a player that needs no introduction. Currently the number one player in Europe with, I believe, over 700 CP. So they are really just... they um, for, for World's Day 2 invites, they're not being challenged. Nobody can actually even come close. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, if, if, if Aurelion gets overtaken by someone, it is probably someone who's already in Day 2 as well. Exactly. Yeah. So um, they must be feeling really confident going into um, th this match. Probably possibly going for the stipend or the travel award for the next international championship, wherever uh, that may be. and or, or even just kind of going for the prize money or the glory. Yes, of course. Uh, the, uh, he's, uh, the, the opponent Maurice and not I'm not too familiar with Maurice but you know as you've seen from earlier rounds you never underestimate someone that you're not too familiar with we saw an upset in in round one and you know who knows there might be an upset in this game Indeed, exactly. What we are yet to see because these two high-level players, undefeated, are doing excellent already. I remember actually um, casting the Brem Regional Championships uh, last year, where uh, which Maurice won, which, oh, okay. which was yes. amazing. He was using very similar kind of team to the rest of the top cards, yeah. but he just played it so masterfully. He just was able to take the win versus anyone who faced him. Yeah, and just having a quick look at their teams, a uh, really good balanced team on both players. So this is going to be a really masterful match of you know both players getting into position, just making sure that their Pokemon are positioned in the correct time. And maybe we're going to see some you know terrors at the right time as well. Like I think that's something that is going to be really key here. Just you know making sure that you you call the protects correctly, you call the terrors co correctly, and you know perform at the set, the time that you need to. We can see it here, Aurelion is the Udrek Special Event finalist, Bokken Regional's top four, OCIC top 16, and in seniors, the world's top eight. Yeah, I know, Aurelion, I think this is, might be their first Masters yes. here, so even mm. more incredible as to how well they're doing. And Maurice, Utrecht Special Event top 16, and that Brennan Regional champion. So a bit more of a, a, a recent player is Maurice, but in terms of his accolade, that's pretty consistent at the moment. Yes. A regional champion and then a top 16 is in, quite incredible too. So um, I. I'm not sure really who's going to win this or who my money would be on at the moment. Yes. Well, I have to say, I, I am really cheering for Aurelion just because it's their first year in Masters. And I'm just so impressed at the fact that you can, you know, come straight out of seniors and just have such a dominant year. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before, but their teams are now up on the screen. Aurelion with Fluttermane, Amoongus, Arcanine, Palafin, Tinglu and King Gambit. So we've manifested the Palafin that we were talking about earlier and the Tinglu. Yes, I don't know if um, any players would <laughs> be thankful for that for manifesting <laughs> it so, but here we are um yes it's a fairly standard team looking at it at the moment but there's a few kind of like unique kind of things that i can kind of spot there the terra grass on the arcanine which is maybe often more terra water the terra poison on ting lu which is usually terra water as well um with the stone edge as an option there is that rock Ooh. move which is quite interesting which is yeah. very nice as well. So, um, and the King Gambit there too, with no steel move to kind of speak of either. Um, just the Sucker Punch and the Counter Cleave, but being able to boost that up with a very offensive Source Dance. <laughs> that, so, that King Gambit set, I think, has been rising quite a bit in popularity, particularly in the US. And, you know, with the Terra Dark and with the Source Dance, once you're at plus two, it doesn't matter if your opponent resists, it's going to be doing a lot of damage. But here we have Maurice's team on the screen. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> a very cool team. Yes, yeah, he knows it. Yeah, he's, he's smiling. <laughs> he knows he, we've just seen it. If Lutamine, Amoongus, the Blaze Breed Tauros, Iron Bundle, Grimstyle, and the Golden Go. Uh, what sticks out to you the most here, Zoe? Oh, certainly the Grimstyle that we were just talking about that came in top eight in Sao Paulo. And, you know, Tauros was a Pokemon that was really, really popular at the start of regulation. A. I think it's dropped a bit and then kind of bounced back up. I believe it did top cut a regional over at the US. Uh, I cannot remember which regional it was. But it wasn't Fort Wayne. That's that's all I remember. <laughs> well, yeah, that Taurus is really cool because even though it's a fire type, based on everything it's got going for it, it's actually a really nice check for Dondozo. Yes. Uh, because you can tear into the grass type to take the water and the earthquake moves very nicely. You can willow wisp the Dondozo to make it do even less damage. And because you've got the mirror herb, you can copy all of its stat boosts. Yes. So for a, water type, for a fire type to take on a Dondozo, it's quite something. But this one can. <laughs> yes, and once you get rid of the Dondozo, suddenly you've got an incredibly, incredibly scary plus two in all stats, Tauros. So that is something to be... 
aware of. But I think looking at the team, there's the Grim Snarl also, you know, with the light clay prankster, a more standard Grim Snarl set, but it can be a real nuisance to Aurelion in this game because it's going to be reducing the damage output of all, all of Aurelion's Pokemon. Yeah, it's a great point, actually, because, again, it's kind of like changing all of the calculations Maurice might have in his head by suddenly setting up a screen and kind of throwing that all away. As top of that, the parting shot, too, to even lower even more damage, making um, Maurice's team even more safe. So here's the poll once again for these two players. Who do you think is going to take this one? Already on being top CP um, champion at the moment is probably a safe bet at the moment, but we've seen stranger things happen, Zoe. Yes. So Maurice, I think, definitely has the capability here to be able to take them on as well. Yes, and I think the two teams are quite evenly matched, and of course, backed by the fact that it's two really strong trainers, this game could go either way. And I'm just looking at a few other Pokemon on this team, and okay, so the Palafin is more of a standard set on Aurelian side with the Haze and Jet Punch, Wave Crash, and the Mystic Waters. But because we haven't seen so much Palafin on, on screen, I think the only one we saw today did just get knocked out turn one. So hoping this Palafin sticks around a little bit and turns into a hero and starts jet punching away. Yeah, and it could have a place here as well because I know we were talking about the Blaze Beat Taurus and Maurice Zen being kind of good for Dondozo. Um, with the Intimidate, it's, it's got the potential to activate the Defiant on King Gambit. And, but if it does, the Mirror Herb is going to give the stat boost to the, the, the Blaze Beat Taurus as well, which is going to threaten even more because of the close combat threat and into the Dark type. But here we go, and there it is, Blaze Beat Tauros. <laughs> the two um, cool Pokemon. The two cool Pokemon, <laughs> exactly. Yes, finally someone's listening to us. <laughs> yes, and the Arcanine and the Fluttermane are from Aurelian's side. So uh, quite a, both Intimidates coming off from a Fire type. So it's probably you know reducing the, the attack damage, but I think both the Fire type Intimidate users probably aren't quite looking to be... Maybe the the Tauros is also quite threatened because it would be t taking neutral damage from that Flood Domain. Yeah, it's a great point. It's it's in a position where it is it is definitely slower than Flood Domain, so it's definitely threatened by that. by that. And with a, such a low special defense stat, it's going to take a lot of damage. But it does have the potential to protect while Grimstar just sets up a lot of screens, goes for some parting shots, and just makes everything so much safer for Aurelion in, uh, sorry, for Maurice in this matchup. And I think I, we expect him to do that here. Yeah, I believe with the light screen, the Grimstar can survive some super effective fairy hits from that Flood Domain. But sometimes with the players, they, they might actually want the, the Grim Stars to be knocked out after setting up screens because after that, it's not doing too much. But a double switch out from both the Intimidate users, uh, uh, Mungus coming in for Aurelian and uh, another Mungus coming in for Maurice. So <laughs> really cool team. But parting shot as well. I wonder if we're going to see the Tauros come back in on that slot. That would be interesting to see, yes. It would be taking maybe a very hard-hitting fire move. So I think if it, there is a Golden Go in the back, I think that would be the Pokemon to bring in here at the moment. Because you're not threatened by the Amoongus at all by Spores because of its good as gold ability. And you take fairy moves very nicely too. So in it comes. And it is a Dazzling Gleam. So an excellent piv yep. pivoting switch here by Maurice. Yes, I was expecting a Screens to come out, but this play it makes way more sense. And I'm guessing that, that's why you know Maurice is up on the stage and I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so here is the Golden Go that is in now. It is that nasty plot leftover set that we see a lot of with that Terra Water option. So it's probably quite a safe option to go for on Maurice's end, especially seeing Aurelion's Pokemon. They don't have a lot of Pokemon to actually hit water types super effectively. So this Terra Water Golden Go, especially if it's set up, might be a really nice win condition for Maurice to kind of set up for. So let's see if he can actually get there. Yes, Aurelian's Among Us is not really able to put anything to sleep on Maurice's side at just at this moment, just because one's a grass type and Golden Go's got a fantastic ability in good as gold, making it immune to status moves. But and I think Aurelian's were going to recognize that and try to reposition around a bit. The Among Us is going to stay in this turn, but the Arcanine coming back in, so heavily threatening that Golden Go and the Among Us. Yeah, so double switch actually from Aurelion here, bringing in um, not only the Arcanine, but also the Ting Lu. So revealing all four Pokemon to Maurice at the moment and all of the options that he might ha uh, they, they might have for Maurice. But yep, 
quite a free nasty pot for Maurice here. No surprises there to really get the gears going on a very offensive Pokemon now. So it is really on Aurelion to work out what they're going to do to um, take on a potential huge make it rain next turn. Yes, I think this Golden Go is quite threatened by both the ground type and fire type moves from the Arcanine. So it might be looking just to go for a protect this turn or maybe go for a Terra to make sure that it's no longer taking super effective moves. Because at plus two, it's going to be doing a lot. Now, I don't quite see maybe a Make of Rain coming off because it's not going to be hitting that hard. But a Shadow Ball could certainly be dealing a lot of damage to both Pokemon. On yeah, the it depends what you want to hit, doesn't it? Like, if you, as soon as you tear into the water on Golden Go, suddenly you don't really need to worry about the Arcanine at all. Because Fire Type's not going to do much, will -Lewis doesn't do much to you either. Um, so, with the Taurus coming in and also lowering the attack of both these Pokemon, because Golden Go's looking really nice at the moment, especially if we see the Terra Water. And here is the Terra, <laughs> it is into that Golden Go, <laughs> and it is that Water type. So, but let's see what Aurelion can pump out here, because that Ting Lu does have a lot of damage behind it, especially in a Ruination where it does not matter at all how bulky you are. <laughs> yes. Ooh, how coming off. So a really good play from Aurelian there, predicting maybe an Intimidate coming back in and just raising the attack of the Arcanine itself and its partner, Tinglu, both of which are heavy oh. physical attackers. Oh. <laughs> and the mirror <laughs> is going to copy. So what a play by Maurice. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, great. Stomping Tantrum coming out, though. This might do a decent Ooh, chunk. A yeah, critical hit at the plus one, so that is a lot of damage. But that same amount of damage won't be coming out next turn unless there is another Howl uh, and, and another critical hit. But this Tauros is now looking really threatening at the moment. Um, Aurelion still has the Terra option at the moment to be able to defensively get out of a uh, particularly uh, sticky position, and we can see them locking in the Terra Poison there to take on a close combat from Tauros a little bit better. But at the moment, Maurice is definitely <laughs> in the driver's seat. Yeah, so Maurice's Golden Go is looking to be in a really good position, and there's not much that Aurelian can hit that water type Golden Go with for super effective damage. So the, the Ting Lu is going to have to try and land all of its Ruinations to just try and chip away at it. But at the same time, you know, Ruination is not that, ac it's only 90% accurate, so there is a chance to miss. But a, a responding Terra coming out from Aurelian's side onto that Ting Lu, just wanting to maybe take any, make it. Oh, any super effective tax better. Actually, I don't think there's any super effective tax for Maurice's side. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I'm not sure if there is now, but the Howl is coming out, though, kind of cancelling out the Intimidates that this Taurus has been offering, boosting up the offensive power, but it's first, it's a Flebis. <gasps> Calling the Terror, wow. it does over 50% to a Ting Lu. This thing is such a beast. <laughs> uh, Make It Rain comes out as well. Speaking what? of damage, Arcanine oh. completely goes down. <laughs> So, and yeah. Tinglu is looking uh, very precarious now, almost getting KO'd itself. But first of all, it's going to fire out another move. Stomping tantrum coming up on this Tinglu at... Whoa, that's did a lot. It is at neutral now because of the howl from that Arcanine. But even so, I thought the Tauros would be able to hang on a little bit. But, you know, just Tinglu showing that I'm not just here to sit, sit on the field and soak up damage. I can actually dish out damage too without needing to resort to Ruination. Absolutely. Ting Lu is a force to be reckoned with, but it is just on a slither of health at the moment, and I think any sort of make it rain or shadow ball is going to knock it out at this point. However, looking at Maurice's options, though, he's got Grimmsnarl and he's got a Moongus left. So in terms of damage output, it's only the Golden Go he's got left, really, and everything else is kind of more support. Especially looking at Spirit Break as the only offensive option in Grimmsnarl, it's not looking like it's going to do too much damage to whatever's left, really. So Maurice really needs to look after his Golden Go at the moment as its main way of dishing out any sort of damage. Yes, this Golden Go is, I believe, the leftover set. Um, I'll just quickly have a look. It, yes, it is the leftover set. So, you know, with some good positioning, it might be able to recover its health back. The Among is going for a Rage Trail, just keeping its partner safe, while the Grimms are going for another parting shot just to switch out and reposition a bit. Yeah, I like that. Obviously, parting shot cannot a, um, uh, affect a normal Tinglu as it's often dark type, but as now it's poison, parting shot could have gone into that slot. Um, so Amoongus does though, come back in here, which is able to take a spore, unlike the Grimmsnarl, so a decent switch there. Make it rain, though, does finish off that Tinglu. So uh, the parting shot does make sense into the Amoongus, just in case it goes for an offensive bottom buff. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, I don't think <laughs> uh, Poland Puff Among Us with, <laughs> will be doing that much damage. But Golden Go, you know, with the Maker Rain, just completely ignoring that Rage Powder. And the Ting Lu was just so heavily chipped that even though its ability lowers the special attack, the, the Golden Go was at plus one after, you know, getting to minus one after then boosting from Nasty Pop, but now the Fluttermane is on the field and that is a really scary Pokemon. I'm not too sure if the Fluttermane is able to knock out this Golden Go in one hit and it looks like Aurelian also recognizes that and is going to forfeit. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, especially as you're, you were the boost energy, you led with the Fluttermane at that point and now you've switched it out and you've kind of lost the boost at this point. So, uh, I mean, at that point you need to really hope for like a super critical hit or something because Amoongus <laughs> can always keep the, rot the Golden Go really safe with a Make It Rain, uh, with a Rage Powder, sorry, whilst the Golinger just constantly makes it rain and uh, really just threatens a lot of offense offensive pressure. So getting a clear head is Aurelion and going into game two with another plan. Yeah, so really good information for Aurelion also to find out in this game is that you know, the Taurus in the last game, it did copy those attack boosts, but it then just got knocked out by the Ting Lu anyway. And the Ting Lu was at neutral because it got intimidated and then the Howl brought it back up and the Stomping Tantrum then knocked it up, from, I believe, around 75% health. So that Ting Lu is really, really offensive. And that's something that Aurelion, well, both players will know that actually the Tauros isn't as durable as maybe an Arcanine and, you know, could be preserved a little bit better. Yeah, but it's got a decent attack step behind it, does this Ting Lu. So um, Aurelion now needs to really think about what they're going to do about this Golden Go, because once it terror, there was really no way to kind of offer a lot of offensive pressure. And I think the, the issue was that there was suddenly a moment where this Golden Go had such a free opportunity to set up a nasty plot. I think Aurelion needs to really be able to stop that, whether that's a lot of damage from, say, a a Terra Fairy booster energy Fluttermane, or maybe threatening a Shadow Ball or a Moonblast, or whether that's, say, the Palafin that's kind of just switched out on switching back in to force it to Terra, potentially. Yeah, and I, I almost wonder if the Palafin, because he has Haze, you know, you could just Haze away any Maker Rains. Of course, that does mean that you're not doing that much at that turn, but if the Golden Go is looking really scary with a plus two nasty plot, you could just haze it away. And Palafin, being a water type, naturally resists all the steel types, like really powerful Mega Rains coming from the Golden Go. So that, I wonder if that's something that Aurelian will adjust to in the next game. And there's, of course, the King Gambit as well, which is probably the main way to kind of really counter a Golden Go because. This has got Shadow Ball and Make It Rain, both of which King Gambit resist. And King Gambit can hit super effectively back with a Dark type. And even if the Golden Go terrors into the water, it still hits for a neutral. But obviously, facing down this Blaze Bee Taurus, which seems like perfectly designed to deal <laughs> yes. with it, it makes it not quite tempting to go for it. But maybe Aurelian wants to go down that route. Possibly you might want to support it a little bit more, say, with your Arcanine to reduce the offensive pressure of the Blazebreed Tauros and just position a little bit more so that you can kind of deal with that. And then you, you can then find that the Golden Go you can then take on a little bit later. Yes, and we are going to go straight into our game two with the Golden Go and Grimmsnarl versus the King Gambit and Fluttermane. So yes, the King Gambit coming out this turn, just trying to scare off the Golden Go and just may maybe with proper support, you won't be as afraid of that Tauros. Yeah, now, interestingly, now we've got a little bit of a contrast here because I think now the King Gambit here on Relion's end is now in the perfect position <laughs> to kind of get a free sword stance here. It's really not threatened by anything right now. Spirit Break from Grinsnarl doesn't care about that. We just get a boost anyway. <laughs> um, a plus two boost. Ex exactly, plus two boost. And the Golden Go's not threatening anything either. So I think we're definitely going to see a sword stance here. The question is if the Taurus comes in, it's going to get a boost as well. So. Um, it, it might get a little bit tricky, but at least the King Gambit is in a nice position now. Yes, this Flutter Mane is looking quite threatened by the, the Golden Go with a super effective Make It Rain, but at the same time, the Golden Go is also threatened by the King Gambit. So it's like a really interesting rock, paper, scissors over here, but a Terra is going to come out turn one. So one of the players just making sure it's the Golden Go this turn. So Maurice just wanting to make sure that the Golden Go is going to survive this turn and not going to take any super effective hits. Absolutely none. There it is. Terra Water, the wing condition that Maurice knows and loves. It's the Reflect coming out 
from uh, Maurice's end, which makes a lot of sense as you're facing down this very threatening King Gambit. Dazzling Game comes out though. Grimstar, as you mentioned earlier, Zoe, now is, is able to survive some of these fairy type hits. But the nasty plot now is, is going for it. He's almost just going all in. He's keeping his Pokemon there. And there's the Swords Arts as well. So this is getting a little bit scary now, Zoe. <laughs> Boosts all along the field. A King Gambit at plus two attack. A Golden Go at plus two special attack. So now both these Pokemon have the potential to be dishing out really, really strong hits. The Golden Go, of course, has a spread move in the Make It Rain, which will probably going to take out the, well, not probably, it's definitely going to be taking out the Fluttermane if the Fluttermane doesn't switch or protect, but I don't think he'll be doing too much to that King Gamma, but the Grimstar is going to just straight away switch out instead of going for a parting shot this turn. Yep, and then to the Amoongus, there it is. Yeah, and a really good call there from Maurice too, because you can't parting shot the Dark type into the King Gambit, and the Protect would have blocked it too, so a really nice, uh, a safe switch there um, into your partner Amoongus that can now redirect away all of those Kowtow Cleaves, etc. that this King Gambit has. As there is no goggles on it, it is the Lumberry instead on this King Gambit. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, actually, a correction to earlier when, when we were saying the Spirit Break going to... Oh, no, that was Spirit Break. Sorry, I was thinking about Parting Shot. No, no, no. I wasn't paying attention to the game kill clearly, so never mind. Okay, so uh, oh, I'm just like in, in just gobsmack actually, because Orion is considering a third, so uh, sorry, a second source dance at the moment, um, which I suppose makes sense here because you know you can take a spore at the moment from the Amoongus, and this Golden Go even it, at plus two, it's not still going to dish out a lot of damage right now. So um, a missed opportunity too for Maurice to kind of um, uh, go for something there at the moment. So it, we'll see if he can really make the most most of it, especially with this Golden Go being a little bit faster than the King Gambit but we shall have to see. Both these guys are yet to reveal how much damage they can do. Let's see. <laughs> yes, Aurelian withdrawing that Fluttermane, just recognizing it's really, really heavily threatened by this Golden Go. And Ting Lu coming in, helping out its partner, uh, King Gamba, which isn't going to say, oh, that took it really, really well. At a plus two, you know, both Pokemon just taking some chip damage. I think, oh, look at that now. A plus four sword stance. And I wonder if the Amoongus goes for the spore. Okay, into the King Gamma. So trying to burn off its Lumberry so that it can go for another spore the second turn. Yeah, I like this play because things are kind of slow at the moment, right? Ting Lu is coming in, lowering damage. It's not threatening big KOs. Golden Ghost is still sitting there, fairly healthy. So you can afford to kind of go for a spore and then now th really threaten it going into the following turn. So I like this play from Maurice. He's just got to make sure he's using his supportive options in the Amoongus and Grimstone are ready to kind of support this uh, Golden Go, which has now done another Make It Rain. Yes, this Amoongus is looking, it's quite free to just spore anything he wants because the King Gambit has lost its Lumberry. Well, it ate it after getting put to sleep. And the Ting Lu within the Salt Vest is unable to go for any sort of protect and being terror poison, it can't actually be immune to it. So, and you know, if the Flutter Main does switch in from the back, that's also going to be put to sleep. And I, I don't think I've seen, we've seen what Aurelian's last Pokemon is, but we're going to see a Terra come out from uh, Aurelian's side, from the King Gambit, going to Terra Dark. So indicating that they're probably going for an attack this turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. It, it, and it's interesting though, because you've got, you're removing your resistance to the Make It Rain. So it's an interesting decision, but Aurelian obviously has some sort of calculation Ooh. potentially in their head to see if maybe this Kowtow Cleave that I think is going to come out <laughs> might even KO. So, but first it's the Ruination into the Protecting Amoongus, and let's see where this Kowtow Cleave hits. Yeah, it's really interesting actually that Ting Lu outsped the King Gambit, because Ting Lu is normally just slightly slower than the King Gambit, but a really good protect from Maurice over there. Just, you know, the, the, du the double up into the Amoongus and you know, the, the protect just nullifying. And so the Golden Go just got a free nasty plot up. Yeah, incredible play by Maurice there because now the Lumberry is gone on that King Gambit. It's suddenly really threatening because Spore could go into either of those slots. So Aurelian was obviously feeling the pressure there to kind of get rid of the Samoongus before it spores, especially with the potential to support its Golden Go with a Rage Powder. But I think what, obviously what he did not expect was that protect, and which is was just so effective in buying this Golgo a complete free turn to yeah. set up a nasty plot. So it's still at the potential where are we going to see the damage? <laughs> yes, and Aurelian protecting their King Gambit over there, just trying to avoid any spores. But the Among Us going for Rage Powder, trying to keep its buddy safe this turn. And so the Golden Go going for and make a rank, just, you know, it's at plus three. It's going to be doing quite a lot of damage, even though it's resisted. And that does quite a bit, bringing that Ting Lu with the Assault Vest into the orange. Yeah, considering Assault Vest and the Vest of the Room, that is a lot of damage. 
Ruination does go into the Amoongus, getting it just below half, but thanks to the Citrus Berry, it's going to be able to take another one, and maybe even a counter cleave from this um, King Gambit. So, it's so many bulky Pokemon on the field right now, Zoe. <laughs> it's uh, it's very different from our last round. Yes, yeah, so all booster. So, the, I believe the Golden Go is now at plus two, because it was at plus three before, and the King Gambit is at plus four, and there is no way to reduce the attack of that King Gambit. There's no Wo Chen on the field, so that's not an option. No, that is true. That is a great, a really good point. For the fact there is no Wo Chien. I hope people like uh, can <laughs> learn from this. Um, but yeah, like we're still at this point where we're seeing how much damage this this Golden Go can do, and the Rage Pound does come out now, so it's going to stay a little bit safe, especially this turn. But it's first to make it rain. Is it enough? Whoa! Yes. Oh, oh absolute double KO is onto the King Gambit. Yeah, you get rid of a Steel type, then you are going to be taking yeah. those Make It Rains a lot harder. And Aurelion looks like they've paid the price this turn. Yeah, that's actually really interesting because the King Lu was faster than the King Gambit, and because he got knocked out first, then the King Gambit took the full, um, like, there was no, when it took the Make It Rain, there was no damage reduction from the spread. And also, there was no damage reduction because the Team Lu was already gone from the field. So, had the King Gambit been faster, it may have been different. But of course, Flutter Main now and the Amoongus coming in for Aurelion down to their last two Pokemon. Yep, last two Pokemon. And Marisa still got all four of his. So, it's looking really strong. But if there's any Pokemon that can kind of bring something back potentially, it is a Flutter Main because it has so much damage potential behind it. The Amoongus, though, is looking very healthy. So, even a Shadow Ball there may not KO. But if you can kind of chip it down a little bit or maybe get that critical hit, you might be still in the money. Whoa. <laughs> Another oh. nasty from Maurice just making all the calls. And this this Golden Goat just has nothing to fear from this Mungus because of its excellent ability. And being a, a water type now, it, it's not going to be taking any super effective hits. And the ball and buff does a bit of chip damage, but it's... It's going to be doing a. It needs to be doing a lot more than that if it wants to knock out that golden goat. <laughs> yeah, the audacity for Maurice <laughs> to just nasty plot get, just keep going because y you might as well, right? Because then yeah. you can then threaten the Amoongus. So, but yeah, Aurelion goes for the forfeit. Fair enough. Um, and handing it over to Maurice, yes. who played an excellent game there. Yeah, really well played from both players. Like Maurice coming in as the underdog, even though they're a player that's got a re like regional champion. So you know, don't, don't underestimate that. But I think the polls thought that Aurelian would win, but you know, sometimes th there are upsets. But Maurice played that game so so well, and I think he caught on the fact that the Team Lu was faster than King Gambit, which is why he went for the Rage Powder with the Amoongus. Yeah, and a really good call. Um, and it, he was just he obviously. You can see he, he's really practiced his matchup, right? To be able to know what he needs to do to keep that Golden Go safe as his win condition for so many teams that he faces. And we could see how masterful it was because Arena's team had nothing to hit the, the water type for. So in a Golden Go, which is already bulky and so offensively uh, present there, can't be hit by Spore. It's the perfect Pokemon to set up if there's nothing to threaten water types. Yeah, it's a, there's a good reason why there, a lot of bulky Pokemon are choosing to go for the Terra Water in this format because there's just not that many good electric and grass type Pokemon that can hit. And you know, water is such a good defensive typing. And you know, this Golden Go suddenly with the Terra Water is completely immune to spores. It was just free to start setting up a Maker Rain. And you know, we saw with the even with the resisted damage and an assault vest. It did so much. I'll tell you what Aurelion could have really done with is a Wo Chien. <laughs> like, Instead of the Ting Lu? Yep, you ignore the Amoongus. You can still hit it with grass offensive moves. And if it doesn't tear, you can hit it with dark moves. It's <laughs> the perfect true. option. Yeah. I wanted to kind of mention in that last game that, that speed interaction and Maurice going for a Rage Powder against uh, the Ting Lu. And I think the King Gambit at plus four at some stage. So had the King Gambit been faster, if it went for the Kowtow Cleave on the Among Us, I believe it would have knocked it out because the King Gambit was a Terra Dark. But because it was slower, the Among Us was able to sponge a Ruination. And still, that, that was why Maurice quite, felt quite safe going for that Rage Powder. But then the Golden Go just took the double knockout, so it didn't end up mattering anyway. Yeah, it makes sense when you're team building to have the Pokemon that's using Ruination to or Super Fang to be faster than your ally, right? Because then you can get the most out of the damage, get it down to half, and then 
the other Pokemon then finishes it off or something. But yeah, as you said, Zoe, if, you, if it was the other way around and the King Yep was a little bit faster, it would have been actually really key to be able to get that a knockout and then suddenly really, really dent that Golden Go. And then Fluttermane comes in and you could suddenly really threaten it again. But that was not the case, unfortunately. Uh, this Golden Go was such an offensive presence and it looks like Maurice has been doing very well with it. Yes, and I think it looks like also Aurelian's Ting Lu was trained to be a little bit more speedy because it outsped the King Gambit. So maybe Aurelian deciding, oh, it's an assault vest. I don't need to invest as much in the defenses. I can invest a little bit more in the offense because it, it knocked out the Tauros in one, well, not one hit, but the Tauros was really, really healthy and he was able to knock it out with a stomping tantrum. So, you know, that, some team building choices may not have worked out for Aurelian this round, but I have no doubt that they will be playing very, very well for the remainder of the tournament. Yeah, I think they will. And I think both of these players are going to be pretty well too. So I think um, both these players have, have a pretty good chance of getting to that day two uh, from tomorrow. And they may even face each other again, yes. in which case uh, Aurelian may have a lot more time to think of a plan going into this Golden Game. Yes. And I think now that Maurice is at 5 0, that he, but he must be feeling really, really good going in. Yeah. Because now I think X2's cut, and with nine rounds of Swiss today, he just needs to win two more games, and he's guaranteed a day two. Yeah, that, so it's just in touching distance for him now as well. So it'll be interesting to see what he kind of thinks and how his tournament's going at the moment. He's always such a positive uh, player to kind of talk to as well. And I've talked chats with him at previous events. So we're getting an interview ready shortly for him too at the moment. But thinking of like his team at the moment, it just seems so good and so strong at the moment, especially with that Grim Snarl support that we yes. saw. Like that's, it's such an like, obvious option if you've like played um, Sword and Shield like last year because it was everywhere and then it got dropped off but it still does the same thing sets up screens really supports those particular pokemon and now it gets this parting shot move which you can support even more yeah and parting shot with an intimidate user is actually so so cool on a team because you can leave with your intimidate and a grim style and then you withdraw your intimidate say something the parting shot and suddenly you get your intimidate user back in and you know if you're facing a physical attacker they could be at minus three from the two Intimidates and a parting shot. So I, I'm sure that's something that the Maurice has to say a lot and will be able to elaborate a lot better than we can. So we are going to go to the interview where we are going to talk with Maurice about his team building choices. Hello, Pokemon trainers. Well, 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 Maurice Uteg. What a pleasure it is to have you here. How are you feeling after winning that game? I'm feeling kind of good. I kept my 100% win rate on stream. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm feeling great, yeah. Not only that, but beating the person who's currently leading the EU leaderboard in terms of championship points. I mean, that's that's got to feel good as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know Aurelian is a great player. We played in Utrecht where he completely stomped me. <laughs> so um, I'm glad I could get my revenge even on stream, which yeah. is even, <laughs> exactly. even greater. <laughs> You've got your own back now. And um, OK, so thinking about those games, Taurus Blazebreed, what a interesting pick. Um, how much work does that Tauros put in for you normally? Mm, I, I have to say um, this First of all, shoutouts to Shao for building this team. He played this team the last in, in EOIC. And um, after that, we talked a little bit about uh, Taurus and uh, Taurus especially, because Taurus is actually kind of a weird pick, mm. I would say. And it's, it's kind of weak in, in the sense that it comes the, to the least games. Mm. Um, and yeah, we had a lot of trouble um, facing King Gambits, especially. And, and I came up with the idea of putting Mirror Hop on it so I can intimidate him, um, he gets to plus one, but I resist both his steps, and then I get to two plus two, and hopefully most of King Gambit's right now, to my knowledge, are Terra Dark, so mm -hmm. he keeps the fighting weakness, and I can just kill yeah. it with, uh, or KO it with uh, close combat. Yeah. yeah, that's a really interesting technique. So would you say the Taurus is there mainly to deal with King Gambit? Not necessarily, um, but I would say it doesn't come to the to the normal teams, against the normal teams that, that are known. It doesn't come that much against Dondozo, against normal Palance without King Gambit and stuff like that. So yeah, it's it's just, I would say, a filler Pokemon because Intimidate is always great, especially with screens together. And yeah, I played it quite a lot today, actually, mm. because if there are some chain powers, you know, they don't like facing Intimidators that yeah, hit yeah, the, yeah. both their steps are super effective against it. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, It was so cool to see it brought to both games and in two fairly decisive victories, actually, in that um, 
game two, especially a lot of stat boosts on Aurelian's King Gambit and your Golden Go. Um, yeah, I mean, going for that final nasty plot in game two, getting go <laughs> really boosting Golden Go stats. Um, what? How useful is Golden Go for you in this current meta? Oh, Golden Go is great. It just solo wins against the, the normal Pelican balance teams that mm. we see around. Um, but it gets tougher if they have King Gambit, as you could see. Mm. So yeah, game two definitely uh, came down to reads. But I felt like um, he wasn't willing to go for the sucker punch. So I felt like hmm, he probably he will go for for Kautau cleave, and if he Kautau cleaves, he. He, um, hmm. My idea was he either sucker punches the golden go, which he never did before, or he counter cleaves the Amoongus. So I was down to, you know, playing it like this. And I think even if he kill, uh, if he KO'd the, the golden go, then my Taurus would have come in, get the stat boost. Of course, King Gambit would have been at plus five, which is crazy, but I would still survive the sucker punch. Um, and then I can I can threaten his King Gambit while I can threaten the other slot with a spore as well. So I. I was the game was very open. If he if he didn't mess up, I would say mm. um, it, it wasn't a mess up. You know, it was just a read. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for for him, it, it sure felt like that. Yeah, it really it's a really interesting tactic where yes, you're boosting your opponent, but it's so that you can take advantage of that in return. Yes, that's. Uh, I mean, it's risky, but it played out well <laughs> for you in this particular game. Um, uh, that's fantastic. So you're unbeaten so far today. Yeah. And um, looking ahead, how's your season going? Well, my season went quite well, I would say, um, mm. except for London, which we are not talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, I already secured my invite through the nice little online tournaments. Mm. So um, today I'm really playing just for fun, I, w I would say. And I think it's the same thing with Bremen last year. Um, I don't feel this pressure on myself anymore and I can play way more confidently. You know, I don't, I don't have to play so yeah, so under pressure because yeah. I already have my invite. I don't think I'm in the t day two wise, especially because I don't, don't go to Turin. So yeah, I can just play for for a good finish. Yeah, play for you. It's uh, it's really interesting. I, I find often that. If you take the nerves out of the equation, players tend to play much better. But it's yeah. all very well telling someone, well, don't be nervous. That's, but that's not going to have any kind of effect, is it? So how do you cultivate that, that for yourself? How do you cultivate that confidence and just what it, what will be will be? Well, I, I mean, for, for this tournament, I really, I, I really um, it doesn't really matter if I have a good finish or a bad finish. My girlfriend is here with me. Shout out to her. <laughs> and um, if I do badly, then I just drop, which, well, I didn't do badly, so <laughs> yeah, I'm not dropping yeah, yeah. anymore, but um, that was the idea, basically, so I really had no stress at all going into this tournament. For other tournaments, um, I try to keep it, uh, I, I try to constantly remind myself that this game is always about fun mm. and not about a good finish or some little championship points. Mm. Um, those are just numbers at, at the end of the day. It's all about fun and um, it doesn't always work out. Of course, mm. the stress gets to me, but um, yeah, I, I try it not to. Yeah. Take it to, to the heart. Absolutely. That's such a warming message. It is all about fun. If we're not having fun, then why are we here? Uh, but exactly. that's wonderful to hear. And finally, uh, Maurice, one quick question for you. Um, favorite Pokemon? Favorite Pokemon? Oh, that's a tough one. I would probably go with Katana. Katana? Yeah, okay. I really like Katana. It's so small, so <laughs> such a cool design. Yeah, yeah, small and but small, mighty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a really good choice. Uh, finally, any shout outs you want to give? Well, I already shouted out. Um, Shao, who, who built the team, like prop, props to him for building this crazy team and thank you for sharing it and talking to me about this team. Um, shout outs to my girlfriend who came here with me and to my family who's probably watching. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, all of the other friends who are prepping with me, who are just here and making this community uh, what it is. And uh, it's so great to, to, yeah, be at Pokemon events. Yeah, it's a wonderful community, isn't it? And uh, Maurice's testament to that. Thank you so much for talking to me, Maurice. Congratulations again. Looking forward to seeing how the rest of your day goes. Hopefully, yeah. Pokemon trainers, we will be back very shortly with some more action. Don't go anywhere.